This is my testimony as a first-time homebuyer and overcoming hope deferred. So God blessed me with a house, and here's how it all happened. A little backstory, I'm a single mother of three young girls. I've been divorced a little over a year, but I left with a large amount of debt. First, the Lord blessed me with a two-bedroom apartment at just the right time. It's been a very trying year, emotionally and financially, but I never lacked for anything. I signed a 12-month lease on the apartment, and I had determined that I was not going to stay any longer than that. I worked diligently to pay down as much debt as I could this year as soon as the tax return hit and in the months to follow. I worked hard to raise my credit score, submitted my first application for a pre-approval on a mortgage, and was disappointed in the amount I qualified for, but was still determined to start looking seriously at houses. The beginning of May, I was shown the very first house, and I wanted it. Even though it had obvious issues and it was overpriced, when I drove away after that showing, I prayed, thanking God for the house. But that house went pending and eventually sold. I kept looking and thought I should apply with another lender to see if I could get approved for a higher amount. That second lender also assigned me to a real estate agent. The second pre-approval was for a little more than the first one, but it still wasn't enough for a decent house in today's market. And the second lender had reassigned my loan officer, stating that the first one hadn't communicated enough, which to me was odd because he was communicating. The second loan officer was even worse. He pretty much ghosted me. At this point, I kind of stopped actively looking and decided to focus on paying down more debt. I'd still scroll Zillow several times a day and saved any house I had hopes of eventually buying. Over the next couple weeks, the real estate agent I was assigned kept in contact and checked in with me. June 22nd, a notification popped up from Zillow. I scrolled through the listing and pictures, and this house looked perfect for me and my girls, but the price was a little higher than I'd ever gotten approved for. I showed the listing to two of my sisters in Christ, who encouraged me to go right away to my bank and try getting pre-approved through them. There was no time to waste, since all decent houses in this price range were selling quickly. I left work right away and headed to the bank to start the pre-approval process for the third time. To my surprise, I was pre-approved for the exact amount of that house's listing price, which was $30,000 more than my first two approval amounts. The loan officer at the bank still had some things to work out with her manager and said she would get back with me the next day. I left the bank so excited and was thanking God for this blessing. And on my way back to work, I drove by the house. As I pulled onto the street, I saw a car in front of me driving by the house real slow, like they were checking it out. As I'm following behind this car and driving by the house, I started to decree and declare out loud that that was my house in the name of Jesus and rebuked all others who would try to take what was mine. Next day comes. Friday, the loan officer at the bank communicates she is still working on my financials and seems to be really working on my behalf. I hear nothing the rest of the day. Monday comes. The house is now showing pending. I reached out to the loan officer at the bank and nothing. I call and email and text and still no communication. It seems I've been ghosted once again. At this point, I figured I had got it wrong. Maybe that house wasn't for me. I eventually got a hold of the loan officer and she explained what else I needed to work on financially to get the down payment assistance approval since that had slightly higher debt to income ratio standards than the FHA loan itself. I continued to work on paying down my debt and improving my financial situation, but still checking Zillow to see any updates on that house. The house did not sell, but when it went back on the market, the price had gone up by almost $10,000. I continued looking at other houses and kept watch on that one. In the beginning of September, I decided to apply with another lender and made my fourth attempt at a pre-approval. This one was better than my first two, but less than the bank amount. I had gone back and forth so many times on whether I should buy a lot of land in a modular home, keep looking for a deal on a decent one already built, or to just wait it out longer and keep paying down debt, even though my apartment lease was up in a few months. And over the next couple months, that house continued to have two pending sales and would go back on the market although I didn't notice it until September 19th. The house was relisted three days ago, and the price had gone back down to the original listing price that I had already been pre-approved for. I sent a text to my realtor inquiring about it, and he said it looked good and it should finance. I attempted to call the loan officer from my bank again. No answer. I called the main bank number and spoke to the assistant who thankfully was able to help me, 
She sent me the pre-qualification letter I needed and again reminded me of the debt I needed to work on to stay approved. My realtor showed me the house that very evening and I put in my first ever offer on a house. I offered full listing price and asked for the seller to pay closing costs up to the allowed 6%. While signing the offer, I take notice of the seller's names and I begin praying. I prayed for God to put it in the seller's hearts to accept my offer and to not be greedy, but to have a peace about accepting my offer. The next day, I requested my two sisters in Christ at work to pray with me about the house and then I waited to hear from my realtor. Finally, that evening, I got the call. The sellers did not accept my offer. I was told for two reasons. They did not like the bank I was using and they did not want to pay full closing costs because they had just put a new roof on the house and fixed up some siding. I called and talked to the seller's realtor to see if I could get any more information as to why they declined my offer and what I needed to do. She informed me that they wanted to sell it to me. I attempted to look into another lender, but the numbers just didn't seem right. I asked my family if they could help with the down payment, but that was a no. And within a couple days, the house had another pending offer. The seller's realtor said she would keep me in mind, so I figured I'd stay put in the apartment, check in on the status of that house, and keep paying down debt. Sometime in mid to late September, I heard in my spirit the words, ask again. I felt it was related to my offer on the house. September 27th, I emailed the fourth lender back and asked to revisit the loan approval amount to cover the listing price of this house. Everything looks great, pre-approved, and looking to move forward. Then the house goes pending again. I hadn't heard anything from my realtor for a couple weeks, and then on October 23rd, he texted me saying the realtor on that house told him the bank hadn't ordered the appraisal yet and it was supposed to close that Friday. Wednesday the 25th, he texted me to say the realtor on that house called him, saying the deal is about to fall apart. Later that evening, he texted again, saying the house is back on the market. The next morning, I emailed the fourth lender I had been working with and asked for an updated pre-approval letter specific to this house and the new offer. Thursday morning, my realtor submitted my new offer of almost $5,000 less than the asking price and for them to cover up to $5,000 of closing costs. And just about six hours later, he texted me saying the sellers accepted my offer. Friday morning, I sent my earnest money to the bank and scheduled the inspection. Saturday morning, the inspection was done. I chose to use the same inspector as the one that had just been done a few months ago. My realtor said he would be familiar with the property and probably offer me a discount. I'm glad I went with the same inspector. My girls and I met him at the property and he walked us through all his findings. I expressed my concern to the inspector that I had to use the down payment assistance and the house has to be move-in ready according to FHA standards, and I wasn't sure if the seller would be willing to repair anything since they already accepted my offer for less and were covering closing costs, especially given how they were already put out for a new roof. Turns out the inspector knew the seller and basically told me I shouldn't worry about it. October 31st, I was listening to a video about an early Christmas and birthday blessings for many. It was a great encouragement. I hit the like button and noticed the number 616. The next video auto played and when I went to hit the like button, it also had 616 likes. Again, the next video I clicked on had 616 likes. Then the next video I clicked also had 616 likes. Once more, for a fifth time, the next video that auto played had 616 likes. I had to go look up the meaning of 616 in Strong's Concordance and it said, to give birth to, beget, produce, to breed forth, to generate. November 2nd in my prayer time this morning, I prayed Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Later that morning, I listened to a video from a YouTuber I subscribed to titled, God told me the crossing over has begun. And he talked about Exodus 14, 14. My realtor sent the list of repairs to the seller's realtor that we thought would be minimum FHA requirements. And I declared that the Lord will fight for me. I need only to be still. Later, I opened my YouTube and the very first video listed is titled, It's time to move. You have stepped into a season called Immediately, Amos 9, 13-15. The YouTuber's name is Stephanie, and that is also my lender's name. And in the book of Mark, the word immediately is used at least 35 times, and it takes on an urgent tone. Almost everything in Mark's gospel happens in dramatic, rapid-fire succession, wasting no time. My realtor's name is Mark. Then I got to thinking. The seller's name is Joshua, his realtor's name is Sarah, the inspector's name is Jacob. All of the major people involved in my home buying process have biblical names. How cool is that? Things continued to progress quickly it seemed. The sellers agreed to fix most of the things on my list. 
We didn't need another appraisal because it had already been done from the last transaction and the title and abstracting were already done from the last deal. Then my lender calls. The closing costs are more than the $5,000 I'd asked to be covered by the seller. I'd have to up the offer by $2,000 and ask for $7,000 in closing costs. But the sellers agreed and we proceeded. I didn't hear anything for about a week after that. My realtor texts me and says, looks like we are on track so far. Then he texted me an update on the repairs that had been done. The remaining things would be finished up next week. And this was the week before Thanksgiving. The next day, my realtor texted and said, the seller's realtor just called and the sellers could close early if everything was ready with my lender. I said, oh yes, I'm ready to close as soon as possible. My realtor checked with my lender for an update. Turns out they were still waiting on the title work. Next day, November 21st, my realtor says he got an update from the lender. They can close me sometime next week. We scheduled the closing for next Thursday, November 30th. I gave the apartments my notice to vacate. My realtor met me and my girls at the house that Saturday morning to do the walkthrough after all repairs were done. Things were so close. I enjoy the Thanksgiving holiday and keep packing up the apartment over the next few days. November 27th, I see a YouTube community post that has a picture simply stating, that new home is coming. Praise God. Tuesday, November 28th, my lender lets me know they are still waiting on the down payment assistance approval from the state. I keep the hope that things will stay on track for Thursday's closing. After work, I go to Lowe's to buy a new deadbolt and locks for the doors on the house. As soon as I pull into my parking spot, I get an email from my lender. The down payment assistance program is behind. They were still working on files received from the 17th. I had everything set in place for closing Thursday and being able to move in Saturday morning. I was a bit disappointed, but I kept the hope that it could still happen as planned. I still went into Lowe's and bought those locks. After I got back to the apartment, I opened YouTube and the first thing I saw was a community post from an hour ago. It said, I have a message for a woman of God out there. Keywords, door, get ready, prepare, update, revisions, Esther treatments. A divine appointment is here for you. This is the confirmation you are waiting for. An urgent confirmation because you have not been taking heed due to lack of faith. You are about to be caught off guard and God does not want you to feel even more unprepared. I kind of slowed down on packing and thought I could take a break after getting the news earlier, but I took heed and packed that evening instead of relaxing. Thursday comes and goes, and meanwhile my lender has asked for several more financial documents for the down payment review. Friday evening I get a text from my realtor that my lender is trying to close this on Monday, sometime in the afternoon, but I hadn't received any notifications from my lender about this. I continued to pack over the weekend and acted as if I was closing on Monday. Monday morning comes. I'm still sending documents to my lender. My realtor updates me and says we are on the calendar for closing at 3 p.m. today. Then my lender calls and tells me I'm about $400 short of the two months of mortgage payments the down payment assistance program requires me to have in reserve before closing. Last time we spoke about this, she didn't make it clear that it was a requirement and only that it looked good. I made some calls and got the $400 sent to me ASAP. I called my lender back and told her I had the money in account. She then says I needed to get a letter for the gift money and she needed bank statements from the giver. She also told me I'd need to bring a cashier's check for $400 to closing because of the realtor fees that were added at the last minute. All this was happening within minutes of me having to leave work to be able to make the drive to the closing that was scheduled at 3 p.m. My realtor texted and said there were a couple hiccups and they were now thinking we could close at 4 p.m. if not tomorrow. After a few minutes, I finally got the email, cleared to close. I started calling my lender to see how much the cashier's check needed to be exactly. I called her several times and got no answer. I finally decided I just needed to head to the bank and I'll make the check out for the last amount she had mentioned to me. I tried to call her a couple more times on my drive to the bank, still no answer. I get to the teller at the bank and order my cashier's check. The teller heads over to swipe my card and I get a text from my lender. She was on the other line said we got it all sorted out and my realtor had waived his transaction fee so I didn't need to bring anything to closing and to go ahead and head to the title company. I get the teller's attention just in time for him to not swipe my card. I get back in my car and start heading to the turnpike. I start tearing up a little because this has just been a whirlwind of emotions. All at the last minute things turned complicated and chaotic. Then as I proceeded to the turnpike a truck got in front of me and I noticed the license plate. The last three digits were 616. I immediately remembered the 616s I saw all in a row a few weeks ago, 
and I cried even more. I was so thankful this was finally happening. The end was in sight. I was on my way to buy my first house. I remembered how 616 meant to give birth to, beget, produce, to breed forth, to generate. And I was amazed at how God put all this together. Just like in childbirth, you know the time frame when the baby is due. There are contractions and false labor and things progress and then they halt until finally that baby comes. It can be pretty chaotic at the end. Emotions are all over the place and you just want it to be done. And this was definitely my experience. I closed on my first house Monday, December 4th, 2023 and moved in the next day. When God says something is for you, Believe it is for you and have faith that no matter what it looks like, he is a promise keeper. Thank you for listening to my testimony of how God blessed me with the house. And I hope this encourages you to keep believing for what God has promised.